U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has arrived in Taiwan amid tensions between China and Washington. Ms. Pelosi was greeted by the foreign minister and will meet the president of Taiwan on Thursday. Beijing had warned against the visit, threatening forceful action. The U.S. said it would respond to any threat. As we, we can see, uh, such a visit is apparently very much dangerous very much provocative. If the U.S. insists on, the, uh, 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 on making the visit, China will take firm and strong measures to safeguard our national sovereignty and territorial integrity. The U.S. side will bear the responsibility and pay the price for undermining China's sovereign security interests. This is very much um, precedent in the sense that uh, previous speakers visited Taiwan. Many members of Congress go uh, to Taiwan, including this year. Uh, and so if the speaker does decide to visit and China tries to um, create some kind of uh, crisis or otherwise escalate tensions, that would be entirely uh, on Beijing. Well, for more on this, I'm joined by Arise International correspondent Faith Orr, who is in New York. Uh, good to see you, Faith. Um, Nancy Pelosi visiting Taiwan despite warnings from China. Why is this such a provocative visit and why are people so nervous of the possible consequences? I mean, this is a huge visit. This is the most senior politician to travel to Taiwan from the US in 25 years since Newt Gingrich, then US House Speaker, the same role that Pelosi has, did it in 1997. China has been warning for some time against this visit. You know, Pelosi is saying that she is there to kind of shore up, show her support for Taiwanese democracy. But China views Taiwan as part of China and has threatened repeatedly to take Taiwan by force in an effort to sort of, they say, like you reunify the country, bring Taiwan back in to China. Now, Taiwan doesn't want this to happen. It has its own president. It very much views itself as an independent nation. So Pelosi is there to show the US support. A number of decades ago, the US passed a resolution saying that it would back Taiwan if it ever faced any of these threats from China. Pelosi is there to back that up. She's leading a congressional delegation. It's not just her, there's a number of members of Congress with her. And China is angry about this visit. And of course, uh, Nancy Pelosi, as Speaker of, of the U.S. House, is second in line to the presidency after the vice president, which is one of the reasons why her visit to Taiwan is furiously opposed by China. Very much so. Beijing views Pelosi as a proxy for President Biden. You know, she is a very, very senior politician here in the United States. And that is one of the main reasons that Beijing is angry about this. Now, we have had a reaction from Beijing since she landed in Taipei. China has described this as a serious violation and that it will have a severe impact on US-China relations. The military has announced that as of tomorrow, Wednesday, they will conduct three days of live fire exercises and you know very much this is being seen not exactly as a threat but a show of force because of her visit. Uh, Beijing has also suspended the importation of biscuits and pastries from Taiwan. Now that might not sound particularly important biscuits and pastries but it is one of Taiwan's main exports and it's worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to the island. So that is a real hit. They estimate around 100 companies in Taiwan will be impacted by that decision by China to suspend these imports. So they're hitting them economically. There is military threats. Earlier in the day, we saw Chinese warships and planes really pushing the boundaries of the Taiwan Strait, the median line, which delineates the territories of the, the two nations. We saw China really touching that line and some occasions pushing over which is unusual. Normally, neither Taiwan nor China really hits on the line. So China showing that it is angry about this visit. 
And uh, briefly, we've got less than a minute for this part of the chat, Faith. I mean, is there any way that you see the two sides, Washington and Beijing, getting out of this without losing face? I mean, it's a difficult one. So Pelosi is also being very careful. You know, she is saying that the US still very much respects the one China policy. It's just that both sides view that differently. So China sees one China as including Taiwan, the US doesn't. But if the US continues to say, you know, we see, we respect China, we see the one China policy, that could be a way of getting out of it. It is night in Taiwan at the moment. So all eyes are on what's going to happen tomorrow. We know that Pelosi is going to meet the president. She's then going to visit parliament and then she's going to visit a human rights museum. So Beijing will be watching what she does very carefully. We should say not everyone has welcomed her visit, although most in Taiwan have. There is a small pro-China protest outside of the hotel that she's staying in in Taipei. So Beijing very much will be happy that there is at least some protests on the island. But it is possible that both sides could get out of this. I don't think it's in either interest to really ramp up tensions too much. Faith, thanks very much for that, but stay with me because I want to bring in another story. Polls are open in Arizona for voters to decide which Republican and Democratic contenders will go forward to November's general election. Voters will have until 7 p.m. local time to cast their ballots in the primaries. A U.S. Senate seat is up for grabs along with the governor, secretary of state, attorney general, schools, superintendent, and other statewide offices and Arise International correspondent Faith Or is still with me. So voters in Arizona are voting today to select, uh, let's focus on the Republican nominees for the midterm state and federal legislative elections. I understand it's a clear choice between people who stand by Donald Trump and those who want the Republican Party to chart a different course. Yes, indeed. In fact, there's probably two uh, races that are the most interesting. One involves a man called Rusty Bowers. Now, he has been in the state legislature in Arizona since 1993. He... Uh, he testified against Trump during the hearings into the January 6 and into the attempts to overrule the result of the last election. Now, he has said that he would never vote again for Trump. He said he was pressured by Trump and his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, to get rid of the results which saw Biden win Arizona by 11,000 votes. So he testified for that with some emotional testimony. He is now being challenged for his job by another Republican contender that is being backed by Trump. Trump has attended rallies. He has named Rusty Bowers as saying that he's a Republican in name only. He doesn't stand for what the Republican Party believes in. He's called him a coward. He's also encouraged his supporters to spread rumours and attacks on Bowers, including that he is a paedophile, that he condones that, that he is in, interested in election fraud, that he teaches children to hate America. I mean, all of these outright lies, but these attacks are really hurting him. This is a man, you know, that has been in the legislature for 30 years. And it just shows you, I think, the power that Trump can still have in splitting this. Um, the other main race is for the governorship, and Trump and his former vice president, Mike Pence, are backing different candidates in that one. Very interesting indeed. Uh, one to watch. Uh, Faith, thanks very much indeed. Arise International Correspondent Faith Orr talking to me there from New York.